Well, thank you very much for this uh, kind invitation. It's a uh, great meeting and great partnership with uh, the Brazilian Sports Medicine Society and also with the ISACOS. Now, I will touch these high-risk sports, which the chairman of the medical committee addressed previously about the muscle injuries and the decision about high-risk sport. I will touch that in my second presentation. Uh, today's presentation, no, this is my last slide, I am wrong, is more about the medical office or about the medical activities of FIFA. There are a number of issues and it was already quoted by Dr. Singh before that also in the sports medicine and with all the activities within FIFA, we follow our professional and ethical laws and we also follow the Hippocratic Oath. And when I talk particularly, when I defend our profession in controversial subjects such as uh, fight against doping, that very commonly the policy makers or the politicians try to suggerate that all sports physicians are part of the doping business. And I try to defend always that the majority of the sports physicians are actually honest and they are acting in the means of Hippocrates. It's one of the papers I have published a few years ago. The title has been given by a friend of mine, Don Kirkendall, Give a Hippocrates a Jersey. It's actually quite a good title, promoting health through sport. So what are we doing or what is done in the medical office? And one of the representatives is sitting in the first row, Anja Koenig, some of you know her from um, the emails. We organize all the medical services prior and during FIFA competitions. And they are about three to five a year. Like this year is a very special one. We have the World Cup and that gives us a lot of work. But thanks to you, who are helping us in Brazil, it makes it much more easier. We are organizing and monitoring doping controls. And as you have heard, they are about 30,000 a year. So we have to manage this amount from all around the world, and particularly the manage the adverse analytical findings and monitor the true positive findings, which are about 80 to 100 a year majority of them is routine procedures with marijuana, but some of them are giving us really headache, particularly from um, Brazil, but it's getting better now. And we need again your collaboration that you support us, that even those 80 to 100 will be cut down to almost nothing, that we really can say there is no systematic doping, there is no doping culture in football for this. We need your collaboration as sports physicians. We are organizing medical courses and conferences alone or in collaboration, in partnership, such as this one. This is the easiest. You do the work, we come and we enjoy the partnership with you. Then we manage any medical inquiry related to football medicine, whether it is from the doctors, whether it is from the press, this is more difficult to deal with because sometimes the questions are not rational, they are very emotional, but we have to deal with them. We are managing, organizing and monitoring the collaboration between the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence. We will have meeting with all of them in a few weeks in Milano at the Isokinetics Conference. And finally, the FMARC activities. And the FMARC activities developed since the FMARC was established 1994 during the World Cup in the United States. At that time, the overall aim has been formulated, number one, to prevent, reduce or even prevent injuries related to football. And number two, 1994 still, to promote football as health enhancing leisure activity. Very simple formulated objective but long way to get there. To reach that at the World Cup we have those banners around the pitch and we will have them in Brazil as well. Demonstrate on one side 
the 11 plus to prevent injuries, so FIFA is dedicated to promote. And on the other side, that was the legacy for Africa. So for World Cup 2014, this banner will be replaced legacy for Latin America. So in football, on average, and it is unrelated to the level of play, two injuries per player per year. We have 300 million players, so we are dealing with 600 million injuries a year. This is a huge, this is football medicine. There is one paper published uh, that uh, one injury in football creates a cost of $100. We do not know, we really have no proof, but if we would hypothetically take those, 600 million times 100, then I put it in a very small letters, I don't want, but you can calculate by yourself. You come to an astronomical figure. So it's not only a, the question of suffering and uh, being away from the game, but it's also an economic factor. So definitely justification for prevention. This is the way. I stop here. Basically, we don't want to see such incidents during the FIFA World Cup, during any competition. And we have to educate the coaches and also the players to obey the fair play. Now, since 1998, we monitor every injury during the FIFA competitions, and we see clear trend. Now, how can we prevent? It's the loss of the game. It's the, the referees who can impact the rate of injuries and finally it's the preparation before the competition and also during the competition with the different measures we have learned here in this conference. So we have a trend in men's football to decrease the injuries. I hope that the World Cup 2014 we will go even below two injuries per match. While in women football we have the opposite trend. There are increasing injuries, and we have to analyze why. Did the woman take over the bad habits of the men with physical football, or are there other reasons to see that? But we are now very happy with the trends of reducing injuries in all men competition, whether it is the World Cup, under 17, under 20, and the Olympic Games, in all competitions, we have trend downwards. And that gives the science and research a huge, not only responsibility, but also respect and acknowledgement by the policymaker and also by the FIFA Executive Committee. We have another example where through scientific activities, the loss of the gain has been adapted elbow to head. We have less concussions, we have less head injuries. But on the other side, a negative trend, and this is not changing, and we must change that. There is an overuse or abuse of medications. And this is, we are responsible for that, sports physicians. We are also monitoring in all competition what is taken as medication during the competition. And it's amazing, about half of the players, they are during the competition World Cup, they have some medication. Some of them during the whole time, the maximum I have counted, were seven different medications every day during the FIFA World Cup. And it's not only the FIFA World Cup, but it's also the under-17. 
20% of under-17 take during the FIFA Under-17 World Cup non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I wonder, please give me explanation, give me the rationale that this is indicated. And I think here we have to do something in future. We sports physicians that we also educate the people even if they have a little pain that they just not automatically take the non-steroidal. I think we have to reverse this trend. Now the 11 plus, I will talk later about that. That's something where we have evidence. And other aspects which we are doing, I can't show you everything, but the most important uh, uh, research activities which are focusing to the needs of football. We have to accept that the osteoarthritis is five to 12 times more common, more prevalent in formal professional football players than in general population. We have to face this fact, and you know that as orthopedic surgeons, and we have to do something about that. We have to do everything to postpone the time of the artificial joints, of the implants, towards the sixth, seventh, and maybe even eighth decade but definitely the fourth decade to get two artificial knees. When I see sometimes in my hospital, I'm not orthopedic surgeons, but that hurts me. And I think we have to acknowledge, uh, I think Lars Petersen is somewhere here in the audience, the pioneer making people aware that not the implants are the long-term solution. And I think we have to do more about that. His big works on the autologous cartilage transplantation is not sufficiently recognized. We have to do more work in the research and we have to invest money everywhere where it's possible. And the industry is probably not primarily interested to focus their funds into this direction. Another pioneer, Bert Mandelbaum, is sitting in this audience and he was uh, instrumental to sum up all this, what is known about cartilage and cartilage regeneration in this um, special issue of the ICRS, where you have the up-to-date knowledge. From the FIFA, we could manage that funds were available at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, which is the number one academic institution in Europe, that we could establish a chair, a professorship with the aim cartilage engineering and regeneration. This is fantastic. The FIFA secured the funds for 10 years to support the research in cartilage. It's completely independent, button-up research in a top academic institution. Their question is very simple. They are investigating the engineering material, the engineering of adhesion, and 3D bioprinting. This is where they are working a team of currently approximately 20 people with uh, PhD master students and uh, already an assistance in the institute. They are developing new approaches. They are thinking about uh, tissue assembly and particularly the 3D bioprinting is the way where they try to go. The vision, maybe it's a utopia, but the vision would be in vivo regeneration of cartilage to reduce the time of the regeneration which we have now taking in account after the autologous cartilage transplantation. Sudden cardiac death. We are confronted with those situations. We were confronted with Mark Vivian Foy 2003, 10 years ago. FIFA took an action and we were really, the whole world was pleased that Fabrice Muamba from the Bolton Wanderers survived the sudden cardiac arrest thanks to the immediate action of uh, the team physician Jonathan Tobin who was prepared who had the equipment and who knew how to use the equipment. And you will hear later Professor Ephraim Kramer to give you more insight into this. This is also one of our duty. If you are team physician and you are on the sideline, not only you must 
understand the injuries and management of injuries, but you must also be educated to save life if this happens, sudden cardiac arrest. You don't have much time. FIFA as a symbol dedicated to each member association, the FIFA medical emergency bag, Ephraim Kramer will talk about this later. For me, and I will read you, we sent those bags in um, June, July 2013 to every member association. In September 2013, I received an email from Nepal. Wanted to inform you that in Kathmandu, during a semi-final match between Nepal and Afghanistan, on the 8th of September, one player of Afghanistan team had a cardiac arrest. His life was saved due to timely intervention of competition doctor, Dr. Bimra Bista. He used the FIFA supplied automated external defibrillator to successfully revive the player and then quickly shift it to the hospital. The player undergoed a small operation and he is healthy, cured again. He plays football. And this is fantastic. I sent this email to Ephraim Kramer and he wrote very dry back, you save one life, you see, save millions. We have established now, as from January 2014, an international registry for sudden cardiac arrest, sudden cardiac death in football. So whenever you are confronted around the world with a case of sudden cardiac arrest or death, then you can go to the FIFA-STR.com, sudden death registry, and it will be registered. You will be contacted from the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence in Germany, in Saarbrücken, who are processing all the cases. They are specialized on the cardiology. Well, medicine for football and football for health. Promote health as a health enhancing leisure activity. This is one of our objectives formulated in 1994. Physical fitness is vital for a healthy life. We know that. Together with the University of Copenhagen, with the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, we started to do a number of studies. It's a project which is running since um, almost uh, eight years and coming to completion in uh, this year. We are planning a special issue on those subjects. Basically, what we do is that we compare an unfit population. We take unfit population, randomize them into different groups, playing football, twice a week 45 minutes, twice a week 15 minutes, twice a week 30 minutes, and compare them with strength exercises, jogging, and doing nothing. A basic principle of, um, of uh, randomized uh, clinical trials. And then we assess all variables you can imagine. And we started with children, with adults, with uh, unfit population of middle-aged men, unfit population of aging men. Our oldest group is between 65 to 85. Mature women, pre- and post-menopause, and we analyze. I can't go into the details, but basically I can already give you some preliminary results. There is a significant improvement and best in the group of playing football in comparison to jogging and strength exercise in general. But when we go into details like blood glucose, blood pressure, then we have a significant decrease. And we have a number of other variables. We will publish the results in the Scandinavian Journal of uh, Sports Medicine and Science in May, June 2014. So we have the backbone for football for health. Yes, we can with good conscience promote football as health enhancing leisure activity. How we do it? You will hear from Colin Fuller, Fuller and uh, Chile Edilson. But definitely we know today that fast food, soft drinks and physical activity, in contrary to the unhappy trias of the orthopedic surgeons, we call it unhealthy trias, which leads to overweight, diabetes, high blood pressure and others. 
Colin Fuller will talk about the Football for Health, which we are in process following the last Congress of um, FIFA in Mauritius in May 2013. It was voted and unanimously agreed that there is 100% of the Congress to launch this Football for Health as global health initiative. You will hear a little bit more about this. Last comment, the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence. Established medical institutions and they offer an independent assessment on physical and mental condition of football players, state-of-the-art diagnosis and treatment procedures for football players and different levels of skills, and they become an integrated part of FMARC Research Network and worldwide network of FIFA Medical Center of Excellence. We have currently 37 in all continents around the world. We have in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, and in uh, Brasilia. They are the only two in Latin America. We will deal with the application from Chile later today. But we have more interest, and we want to use the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence to disseminate all this what we have learned in uh, research because our research is basically reflecting the needs of football. In the scientific language it's called top-down research. The institution like FIFA is identifying the problem and then we as scientists are asked to deal with that. Of course I cannot deal with everything so that's why we need partnership and the different institution for Brazil now is very important to have a good evidence about heat because the media is constantly saying it is too hot in Manaus in June, I don't think so. We have other issues about altitude, this is in South America a big issue, playing at the elevation of 4,000 meters, concussion, cartilage and others. There are many aspects which we are dealing, but they are always reflecting the needs of football. In the research we are dealing with the prevention efficacy. Is the 11 plus really efficient to reduce injuries? Does the 11 for health contribute to the improvement on health or the efficacy of our strategy in fight against doping? We have to also address critical aspects of football such as long-term changes in formal professional or semi-professional footballers, the mental health we know very little about them. The aim definitely is to improve the game of football and more there we, where we have the ambition for future and we will need your support in Brazil, Colin Fuller will talk about this, to use the power and popularity with scientific evidence, link them to contribute to the improvement of public health in the different parts of the world. Thank you very much for your attention.